The reason I've got a bit of a problem with videos where, you know, it's kind of Apple versus Android is that they generate this animosity between people just on a silly thing like owning a device. Even kids these days are being told that they don't look cool or they're not cool because they don't have a device of a brand. So you might be considering an Apple device like the iPhone 14 Pro Max or maybe an Android device like the S22 Ultra or maybe even the Galaxy Z Fold 4. But one of the things that may be on the back of your mind is the Apple ecosystem versus the Android ecosystem. And not just from your own perspective, but how your choice impacts the people you care about, like your family, your friends, your coworkers. One of the questions that I get a lot in my videos is, can you mix the Android and Apple ecosystems? Does anything break when you use multiple OSs? Let's have a chat. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. There was an Apple versus Android video released earlier this year by some of the biggest tech channels out there. I'm a big fan of those channels and I can only dream to achieve even 1% of what they've done. But, but I thought it was slightly irresponsible because for me, it just felt very biased towards Apple. It was basically saying that iPhones are better than all of the Android phones. And that is the main problem I have with this sort of videos. In my opinion, there really isn't a best OS because we all use these devices in our own way, right? So Android may suit you better than it suits someone else. And it just feels a bit silly and divisive to say that one is better than the other. Apple products are more popular and generate more views. Let's face it, you know, I'm, I'm in the same game. But this video is not sponsored by anyone, so I can give you my view without any strings attached whatsoever. To give you an idea of what triggered me to do this video, you know, those guys were talking about performance, benchmarks, and they even covered how green a company is in their comparison, and they gave it to Apple, you know. I was like, really? The same Apple that are shipping a cable standard that no one else uses? Right, yeah, that's, that's really green. You know, I don't get Apple or Samsung or Google to send me free stuff. The good news for you though, is that I get to freely try all of this stuff and give you an unbiased view. Sure, there are great things that make the Apple ecosystem really powerful and I'm in it. But in some cases, you could be missing out on some really cool devices out there. I'm not trying to sell you any of this stuff, by the way, you know, but my eyes were open to Android a few years ago. Granted, I haven't used every Android device out there in my life, but I can tell you that the user experience, for example, on the Fold 4 here, beats any iPhone right now for me. Not to mention Android 13, which you can get on the Pixel 6 Pro, for example. Super friendly, fantastic to use. Actually, the Pixel 6 Pro is probably the first phone that I've ever used as a true assistant. I covered this a lot in my previous reviews, but my point is, sometimes the trade-off that you get by sticking with the Apple ecosystem, you're kind of afraid of leaving it, means that you might be missing out on some really cool innovation out there. And I appreciate it's easier for me to say this because I've got access to other devices, but at a personal level, I'm not using every phone every day, right? So I have to choose what to use to be efficient. And I have to say, I use my iPhone during the day, sometimes, you know, because of AirDrop and, and because of video. But recently, I've been using the Fold a lot more than the iPhone. And before that, I was using a lot of the Pixel 6 Pro in the evenings just because it feels more ergonomic and a lot friendlier to use in the evenings. It sounded like a good idea at the time. Anyway, I'm not ignoring there's a question of long-term support and software updates and customer service as well. That, you know, we should definitely not ignore those. But those do come at a cost. Let's get into some of the arguments that some people might make for going one way or another. Messaging is an example, right? Where Apple iMessage is awesome and the easiest way to use it is to buy an iPhone, right? Well, if you really want to, you can actually root messages via a Mac or an iPad. So technically you don't have to buy an iPhone, but you do need an Apple device of some sort. But I do appreciate that this is where a lot of the debate comes from on this ecosystem thing. And messages in general is a big deal in a lot of countries. So I gotta respect that. But here's the thing, and I need your help with this one. Messaging apps are getting so good these days, right? Telegram and WhatsApp especially, that is making this argument about blue bubble and green bubble a bit weaker now. So let me know in the comments with the spice emoji if you prefer those third party apps like Telegram and WhatsApp, and use the peach emoji if you prefer the stock messaging apps like iMessage or the Android message. You might say, okay, messaging, you can get around it. But what about FaceTime? Well, when it comes to FaceTime, you can now, I'm sure you knew this already, but Apple introduced his ability to send an Android user a link to join you via FaceTime, just like a Zoom meeting. So again, if you're worried about getting an Android phone because you're not gonna FaceTime with your family, this may change how you approach it. But if I'm really honest, that's just a workaround, right? FaceTime in between Apple devices, it is just a much better. And now with continuity camera, it's even easier. Now we can use something like this mount from Belkin, use your iPhone as a camera, basically. I know there are other apps that can do this stuff, but with macOS Ventura and iOS 16, that's actually working pretty smoothly now. Now, there is one thing that 
won't change and I really can't argue, which is AirDrop. Sure, there are multiple Android ways of sharing photos, videos, documents or whatever. And when you do this on Android between non-Apple devices, it works the same way as AirDrop, frankly. The problem happens when, and I have this problem myself, when you try to share anything from an Android phone to a Mac, for example, or an iPad. There are workarounds with Android apps, but nothing is even close to AirDrop. I use a multitude of apps to do this, but there's always like an extra step or two. You know, the protocol they use is not as fast as AirDrop in some cases. Some require you to scan a QR code. You know, AirDrop is select, send, it's done, right? It does crash sometimes on the Mac, but 99 times out of 100 is flawless. So in this case, you know, if you rely a lot on AirDrop, and when I say rely, I mean you use it several times a day, this could be a deal breaker and going to an Android device is just gonna give you a headache and it's a non-starter for you. Which is really annoying actually, because I think we should be able to move stuff around regardless of the brand of the device that we own. To me, AirDrop or even nearby share should be like a universal standard. But that would mean selling less iPhones, so yeah, that's not gonna work. And talking about <laughs> annoying things, the other thing that really annoys me is how you can't use an Apple Watch, for example, without an iPhone. I fully understand that this is naive to think that Apple would ever allow it, but if you really, really want an Apple Watch and you don't want to spend a lot of money on the latest iPhone, the solution is to buy a burner iPhone, right? Like anything newer than an iPhone 8. I think iPhone 8 is compatible with, with the Apple Watch, but not anything older than that. Another argument that you might hear, and probably coming from Apple users, is how nice the ecosystem works and you know handing off things like music and phone calls or, you know between the Apple devices and your watches and stuff. I gotta tell you because those big YouTubers they're not gonna do it right. The handoff between the iPhone and the HomePod and the AirPods Max as well, AirPods Pro, they're not gonna be as smooth as some people may portray it to you. And it's not very intelligent either. You know sometimes I'm editing videos wearing the AirPods Max. I love the sound quality. I love everything about it. But trying to listen to music or watch some content on the side at the same time as using it with my Mac. It's an edge case, I know, but that's what I wanna do. I wanna be able to do one thing on one device and kind of seamlessly have another device working. It's just so random what it does. It doesn't matter what I press on the MacBook Pro, if I'm watching something on the iPad or on the iPhone, the, the sound just gets really messed up. You know, It will work for about five, 10 minutes, but something happens that it, it switches the audio to the iPad or the iPhone, even though we're more actively using you know, my video editing software on the MacBook Pro. That, that's really frustrating. Not many people talk about this because you know, the ecosystem is supposed to be perfect. But I'll tell you what, it isn't. The only way around this is to kind of turn off Bluetooth on the iPad or the iPhone. And I mean, what sort of user experience is that, right? It's, it's not very Apple. And when you consider the voice assistant aspect, by the way, before I forget, YouTube can be quite tricky for a small channel like this. I'm still trying to grow this channel. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It does go a long way. It gets YouTube to recommend this to other people. And if you like my stuff, it would be awesome as well if you subscribed. Have a look around the channel later. I've got loads of videos and I'm here once a week with a down to earth tech video for you. So if you like your tech gadgets, you're in good company here. Going back to the voice assistance aspect between Apple and Android, I mean, I don't wanna go on too much here in a negative way and sounding like I'm just hating on Apple, but Siri sucks. And so does Bixby, to be fair. And as I mentioned earlier, the Pixel for me has the best assistant out of the box. You know, it's not even close. The speech to text recognition on this device is just out of this world. Even when I put it against Apple's latest, you know, top of the pile 14 Pro Max here, it smokes it. When you're talking to it, it feels like one is a three-year-old child, barely able to make any sense of anything. The other one is some professor from Oxford. <laughs> it's just like night and day, really. I covered that in a lot of other videos, but let's talk about the cameras for a bit. So the cameras on these devices, right, they're all amazing. The iPhone 14 Pro range has some really cool features now, and for video, it does produce superb quality, right? 4K videos on this is just, yeah, really great. But for the majority of use cases, like sharing stuff on social media, you know, taking photos of your kids and your pets, the level of quality that you get on all of these devices are all top notch. No pun intended there. One thing I would say though, is that the Android camera apps is still miles ahead in terms of how fun it is to use in comparison with the iPhone standard camera app. Apple brought action mode now to the iPhone, which brings it a little closer to me in my view. And there's loads of really mature camera apps that will make it fun to use. But the camera app experience on Android phones, you know, it gets so many options, so much more flexible to use. It's actually quite snappy these days as well. Not the Exynos version here, but overall, they're just more fun to use to me. And going the other way, if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you've been toying with the idea of getting an Android device like the Tab S8 Ultra here, which by the way, 
is an absolute beauty of a tablet. Or you might want to try one of the foldable options out there that bring a little bit more innovation to the party. I hope this video gave you a bit of a flavor into those other options and a bit of food for thought as well on the fact that the Apple ecosystem may be getting a lot more credit than it deserves. Okay, mate. Great motorbike. For the next video in this series, I want to make it more interactive. So any questions or any ideas that you might have in this topic, let me know down in the comments. YouTube's AI, bless them. They think you're going to like this video over here. And I made this playlist as well with lots of videos that I think you're going to like. I hope to see you there. Bye.